say a big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this vlog. Simply Safe is a reliable home security system that will keep your home safe. You just order it online or over the telephone. It's delivered right to your home and you set it up yourself in under an hour. Stick all the sensors exactly where you need them. From there, your home is professionally monitored 24 hours, seven days a week. If anything happens, they'll make sure the police are called. They've got sensors to cover every window, every door, plus lots of extra great stuff like water sensors, temperature sensors, high definition cameras. It's all really easy to use and you get protection around the clock for 50 cents a day with no contracts. They even won US News and World Report's best overall home security system of 2020. I was interested in Simply Safe because my house is over 200 years old. It is not easy to run wires in this house. Simply sticking things up and getting them connected wirelessly is perfect for me. Entry sensors protect your doors, your windows. Motion sensors can protect the entire room. Sensors all so sleek and small you won't even notice them. There are many thoughtful features such as they remind you when you've left your doors or your windows open. Thank you Simply Safe. Please visit simplysafe.com forward slash Duresta. Simplysafe.com forward slash Duresta, D-I-R-E-S-T-A. Thank you, Simply Safe. If you support my sponsors, I get to stay here on YouTube. So thank you. I'm in California right now. I'm shooting a television show, so no better time than now to make a vlog. Thank you to my sponsors. I'm gonna jump right in. I just finished up making 29 of these trailers. These are all for Bullet Bourbon. They're gonna be around the country in various places. I can't say exactly where, and we are going to likely make some more. I'm gonna be back in the New York area in the middle of November, so like November to maybe December or through the new year, I'm probably gonna make a bunch more of these. They were a lot of fun. The break is welcomed because they got a little bit grueling. If you did not see me make these, go check out the video on these. I'll put the link in the description below. This is the Kadora Denim on Denim from Cone Denim, who's one of our vendor partners. I'm really excited, the deep rich indigo colors. I just wanted to give you an update on the jeans. We sold out everything we planned on selling in the month of September, so thank you everybody that put in an order. Right now, Christine is doing her hard work on trying to get the production going. And this is just a little segment of her at my place doing the final fitting on the prototype pair. So here's me and Christine, godmother of denim, uh, AKA, link below. Go follow her on Instagram, give her some love and support. These are my jeans here that Christine and I designed. They're made with Kedora denim. Abrasion resistant. You could rub this like 80,000 times and it yeah, wouldn't make 8, a mark. I really, really like the feel of this. This is really beautiful. Yeah, the color is nice, the deep indigo tone. The, the tape is 100% recycled and the teeth are not plated. Electroplating is actually really toxic to the environment. It's just natural exactly. breath. Exactly. In fact, everything, all our hardware is 100% recycled. Brass, if you look there, 100% recycled. So this is metal scrap. So every single thing in here recycled. All of our labels and everything are made in Woodstock, New York. So this fabric is the last selvage denim that came off the looms at the White Oak plant using the Cordura nylon. So I can't wait till we start making some stuff. using cone denim with Cordura, so Cordura denim. Here we have the denim on denim welders gene, and then we have the wax canvas from Car Textile. So we love that we're working with all our American-based vendor partners. Thank you. I'm happy with them, they really feel great. Yeah, they look good, they look really good. And we're really excited because this is Cordura denim. So thank you Cordura denim, and thank you cone denim and all our vendor partners. Mm. There we go, perfect.
And keeping up with current events, another fun video that I did recently, I built a gate for the back of my property. I have another entrance, very similar, but I built the back one to go to school, and then I'm gonna build the front one. But it worked out so well, I'm gonna build the front one probably exactly the same. So I just wanna say thank you to Lincoln Electric, my sponsor for this. I think this is gonna be used in a, a segment for the ARC magazine. Once that's out, I'll talk about that as well. I'll do some social media on that. Thank you, Lincoln. I definitely want to promote my Maloof style rocking chair that I made. This has been a bucket list item for me. I've been talking about it. If you follow the podcast, I've been talking about it for a few years. And now that I'm working with Rockler again, it, I thought it was a good opportunity to do it. It really was really was a, a big success for me personally. It was a really big personal achievement. The video is not performing great on Rockler. Uh, please do me a favor. Go like, share, check it out. Link in the description below. I think you'll really dig it. I mean, like I said, it was a big accomplishment for me. It's got a voiceover on it. It's a little bit more than just my typical video. Thank you, Rockler. Thank you, everybody. Also working with Nick's handmade boots. I'm actually developing a genuine product. I did this boot knife. This was a conversation that we had together. I told them I had this idea for a twisting boot knife and they said, let's do it. So this is version one. I'm gonna be doing a second video when I get back. It's gonna be a little bit sleeker, definitely more manufacturable for like a mass scale. I just really wanted to have some meat and potatoes in this video and I wanted to show some knife making techniques. Although it's not the best grind, it's not the best blade. I was really kind of trying to showcase the concept. Who knew it's a million view video. So thank you everybody for supporting that video, sharing it or whatever it takes to make a million view video. It's still a mystery. But thank you Nick's Boots and thank you YouTube. So we're calling this the skeleton knife. This is gonna be available Thanksgiving. I've been promoting this a little bit here and there. It's gonna get promoted more heavily as time gets closer to the, 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 the sales launch. I made this the same time I made the razor blades and it is really just a starter knife. You could keep it as is, you could cut it, grind it, shape it, do whatever you want to it. So these are gonna be for sale with a poster and there'll be a link below to get on the waiting list. We only have a couple of thousand of them, so it's gonna be a limited quantity. But if you wanna get in early and get on the mailing list, you'll get the notification when they go on sale. The sale of the razor blades was such a success that we're gonna definitely make more and we're working on that right now. So thank you for all that. If you follow my Instagram, you know that I got this engine collection from Mr. Pete. I put a call out there if somebody could help me get those here from Mr. Pete's place in Illinois. Jason McDonald was kind enough to, to step up. He's a, he's a fan and a, and a friend now. I just want to say, Jason, thank you for hauling them here. Safe and sound. They're great machines. We ran the bandsaw on them in the video a few months ago. We're going to keep playing with them. We're going to find other things to turn on. It's cool because I have these machines. Now I can figure out things that don't have a power plant or at least put a little bit of gas in these things and, and fire them up. And I know they were well cared for. So thank you, Mr. Pete, and thank you, Jason McDonald, for bringing them here. Well, you guys know by now that I like collections. <laughs> I just bought an instant collection of engines. I'm slowly starting a collection of Chevy square bodies. I just got this hick ass flatbed truck. I did a little bit of restoration on it before I even turned the camera. I fixed up the bed already. But going into winter, one video I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these fenders and this front end off. I'm gonna put new fenders on, new rockers, new corners. I'm gonna set this up as a welding rig. It's gonna be a fun truck. It's got like a hot rod motor in it and I got it from none other than Derek from Vice Grip Garage. Derek found it for me in Minnesota. So Derek, thank you. Looking forward to ripping up the town in this thing. And from a local friend of mine, I ended up picking up this 77 square body 
step side long bed. I picked it up for Willie. Right now my friend Mike has it. He's doing some really kick-ass mechanical restorations on it. As soon as we have it and I'm in it and I'm driving it, we're playing with it, I'm gonna interview Mike about what he did. We got some before and after pictures of the brakes, the gas tank, all the various stuff. This truck has been sitting for 18 years untouched. It also has a hot rod motor in it, so I'm really psyched about that. Somebody did a restoration on it 20 years ago and then it's been sitting abandoned ever since. The square body Chevy collection grows. So I'm here with John Thompson from Ferd. John, how long have you worked for Ferd? I've actually been with Ferd now. That's my sixth year. Six, that's it? Six years? But I've been in the industry so for 27 years before that. So I've been in the industry now for 37 years. My job is primarily to sit down with, you know, with people like you or anybody yeah. else. And I've studied it. I've actually do, received a degree in it in, in when it comes to metal finishing and metal working. Really? And so the whole idea is that my job is to sit down and help you to do things faster and easier right. uh, with, the, with quality products. You also restore cars. Part of my personal passion is working with metal, with metal and working with wood. So right. we, we restored a couple of vehicles on a personal basis with my, with my family members. And then finally, we just built a car straight up. We what kind of car did you build? I built a 1932 street rod out of stainless steel. <laughs> so the frame is stainless, the running gear is all stainless, and the dashboard, the hood, everything else stainless steel, and the body is Kevlar. I stop at 100 miles an hour because it's a it's a 1932 body. It's only 100, 100 or 120 inch wheelbase, right? And it's 325 horsepower on a 1200 pound rolling chassis, full full rolling body. The whole intention behind it was to prove. People said, "Well, you you can't get stainless steel and shape it and form it." We started out with a flat sheet of paper. Wow. And we actually built the frame and everything else, welded up, boxed it in and stuff eventually. It's all 10 gauge. And then built everything else, all the mounts, dashboard, everything else. Fantastic. So, but what it teaches you is that not only, it, it's just like all the things you do. It's the manipulation of the molecules of the material. Right. It's working with something and, and winding up. And I'm a big restoration guy, so a lot of the parts of the car are restored. They're brought it back into uh -huh. place. FERD is coming out and, and ramping up a program. We call it the uh, the Maker's Roadshow. And, and I want to thank you and oh, some fantastic. of the other guys this thank week you. because for a week, we're going around to some of the people throughout the East Coast and, and working our way over here and stuff and stopping and seeing you guys, getting some of your time, yeah. bringing in some stuff, and we're all talking about how to work faster and better. It's just it's amazing the knowledge you have and just hanging around you. When we first met, I first met you at at uh, Fabtech, like three years ago, yep. and you just like immediately spit knowledge. You can't, you can't help yourself. It's amazing. Well, it's <laughs> some guys are really good with sports stores. Some guys and stuff are really good with other things. For me, it's most of my life has been dealt with working with materials. Yeah, no, and you so really when, know you should. With somebody with a background like you, you say, "Hey, here's here's what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, here's here's what you can do, but more importantly, why it's going to work." Right. And and. For somebody like you, understanding, then if you get into a project and you go, well, it's not doing what I want it to do, you go back to the basics. Yeah. When you go back to the basics, everything works then. So, Mo, what are we doing here? We got a DIY mini so split. So, we got a DIY mini split from Mr. Cool, and today I am just like everybody else over here because I've never done a DIY, so I'll be learning with you guys. Just before the pandemic, Mr. Cool sent me a, a mini split, and Mo came up and did an amazing installation. You could see what we did here in a little short documentary video. Enjoy Mo and Patrick installing the mini split in my bedroom. So it's called a split because you have the, the unit that blows air and the cold and the heat is here connects through the wall with the tubing to the, does that be called the condenser? Yes. The outdoor unit. Um, you hang the machine inside on the wall, you, the bracket, you drill the hole in the proper spot, you connect the lines to the head, which is right over there. Once you get that on the wall, the next thing is gonna be is hanging the outside machine. We're gonna hang that up on the wall over here. And then we just gotta get the Patrick to come by and hook up the electric.
You know, I've been talking for more than a year about doing a go-kart event, and we finally did it July 4th. This is a little documentary segment on that event. It was such a great short little day. I really hope that next July 4th we can turn it into like a 100 go-kart event, because that's what I really was envisioning for this year. Take a look at this. Hopefully it'll get some of you psyched. Some of you wanted to come. I know some people I spoke to directly were going to come. They couldn't come. Obviously, we couldn't travel too much this summer. Uh, Elm City Dave lives close. I got to bond with Musty. I got to bond with a lot of people, including Art from Clement's Garage. Art is incredible. I think Art took the trophy home that day. Dave, this is your interview. Tell everybody who you are, which make. My name's Dave Gagne, and I make all kinds of stuff. Tell me about your go-kart. It's a, let me see, it's a probably a 19... 1969 or 70 Clark um, Cyclone 440. And where did you get it? Um, Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. No way. Way. decided to have a little party and bought a go-kart track and I went around and said I need a go-kart to go see Jimmy. So I looked around and I saw on Facebook that there was a uh, actual track go-kart. So let me go grab one of those but leave it stock looking and give it some, you know, it, it was five horsepower and now it's 16. So it's What did you do? What, what did you put in there? It's a between Briggs that's 16 and it had what yours had, the little the five that was set up on it. And uh, it, it probably does about 40. Really about 40. It's nice. It handles really nicely. Sure. <laughs> bouncy. It's bouncy, bouncy as fuck. My name's Art Clement. I'm from Troy, New York. And uh, I make everything, but mostly I like metal fat work. Can you tell us a little bit about what you built here? Uh, I built the slowest go-kart here. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking lie. <laughs> um, it's just a regular uh, hand-built tube frame. Um, it's got a 340 snowmobile engine in it. Uh, constant velocity clutch set up on it. It's really just junk parts put together. A 95 Articat Puma uh, snowmobile. And did you find that junk that fixed the motor? A customer of, mine, a customer of mine brought me the snowmobile and it had no compression, so he didn't want to fix it. So I pulled the motor out, put pistons in it, I rode it one snowstorm, and I said, this isn't fun, we need to put it on something fun. So <laughs> I stumbled across your video and I'm like, dude, a go-kart race? It. Yeah, 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 I'm doing that. I'm only an hour away, so. Unbelievable. It just motivated me. When you built the frame, did you build it with any, did you build it like on a strong hand table or how'd you build it? I made a two by four jig. Um, right. I would have built a regular one if I was doing like a race car chassis. Right. But instead, like belt squealing. Um, instead what I did was I just built it on a regular lift table that I have. I put a little arch into the chassis so when you're in it, it's, it's you know, like a bridge. It's a little torsion in it, but you can see there's a lot of flex. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you lift one side, you get a lot of twist. I was hoping that would make it help, you know, handle better, and obviously it does. So, so what's bent right now? What are we fixing? Uh, spindle. Um, I was pushing everyone around the track, trying to make them go faster. <laughs> I got some good video of that. <laughs> really good wow. for an old car yeah 120 yeah that's pretty good this all looks new because i think the guy before me did all this he thought he was going to get it running and realized it really mean that he set the dwell properly or the timing set right. properly you so know i'm saying I mean? yeah, I mean, yeah just threw it together to get it running to get it on a trailer and then exactly. play a sucker like yourself exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's water i guess all water well yes, but not much. oh yeah well, can you help me? Hold this. <laughs> help! Just trying to get it out. The rest of the way. It's all water. Smell it. 
A uh, few months back, I did this metal guitar conversion for my buddy Stefan. He's an old friend of mine from my hometown, and I made one of my, the second guitar I ever made, I made for him, and he still has it. He brought it up. We did a little segment. I'm going to make it a longer, long-form video, but here's just a few minutes of my conversation with Stefan. I made him two guitars in 30 years ago, and I made him two guitars this summer. So check out my conversation with my buddy Stefan from Meltdown, Winter, Thorn and Gotten. Those are his bands, and I'll link information below. Yeah, look, we had it all uh, set up by Chuck Older, too. The action's sick now. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Wow, that clear coat held up. And there's a system. Wow. This is like, this is your life. I made this in 1990. This 89, did it say 89? I had it in high school, so I graduated high school 88. All right, so 88, 89. Uh, so this is a little Gurgle and Guts inspired, basically? Well, Gurgle and Guts came after? Seven years later. Right on. Yeah. The second really, guitar you ever made. Ever really dug into. But when I say made, I, I always need to clarify. I, I like to say I tattoo guitars, because Steph got this guitar, I mean, Sam Goody. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was a used guitar, but it was a Wormuth body. And, um, and it was set up the way you wanted. Mm -hmm. And so basically it just started with a body that had all the pockets and everything in place. And I just went nuts on the body. And then you had someone set it up. Who did you have that guy in Woodman set it up? Um, yeah, there was someone, uh, uh, Joe oh. Domjam set them up for us. The one thing, this is this, the one I did for Steve Vai. And the one thing I always liked about this one and this one is that the the mushiness of all the imagery is very similar in the way that I just try to like jam everything into the the silhouette of the guitar shape. Did you ever see this one? No. Mm -hmm. I made that in 1991. Oh, wow. So this guitar... I made in a class, I took a class at School of Visual Arts and the class was do whatever you want. And it was really just to develop your own artistic vision. We were second year of school. And I started playing with guitars because of the gem guitar and the crazy from the heat video by Steve Vai was playing it, which is weird because Steve Vai came back into my life later on. And it was the uh, Dave Billy Roth band. Anyway, so I saw that guitar and I started band sawing, flaming guitars, just sketching up. And then I, I went to Sam Goody. This is the Sammy. You could just barely see it. it says Sammy on there. Made this body out of a chunk of poplar that my dad had gotten me. And uh, I had no idea about paint. So I painted it with like Rust-Oleum. And I said, you know what? This is good as it is. I brought it to that class. I got a lot of accolades. And then I said, okay, this is good enough. I'm going to move to another version of this. And then I ended up doing this for you. And I really upgraded my paint game. This is all lacquer automobile paint. But then from this one, I ended up doing that flaming one that, that it did for ESP. Because they had seen these two, and then they like, we want to do a special flaming guitar. I'd love to see some of your designs. Is uh, the Screaming Skull I made for ESP. They wanted to make it as like a sales thing, not necessarily as a, uh, no, it wasn't made for an artist. At the, around the same time, I did the George Lynch one, which I could find online as well. But um, right here, I completely forgot that this started out as like this black, weird shaped guitar that like, wasn't even shaped like this. Yeah, I changed all the hardware and brought it all black. I oh, yeah, changed all the even on the tuners. I went, I had I, ultra lights coming. Uh, this was my favorite bass out, out of all my bases, especially because it's a beautiful neck through. As you can see, look at the wood on this. This yeah. is a gorgeous instrument, and uh, I love it. And we've decided to, you know, make it a brother sister. So we, you know, went for a little bit of a different shape. Uh, same shape, actually. All, all the guitars for the Garden series, even the ones that Jimmy Mazzatelli made, uh, the Black Beauties, they all have that long horn kind of thing with some kind of proprietary headstock. Obviously, we couldn't have a full-fledged Maker Camp like we did last year, so we just did really more of a space holder. We did a lot of live streams on the Maker Camp Instagram. Check out the Maker Camp Instagram to keep updated with next year's event. Next year is going to be off the hook. And I've been promoting with Austin that we do a hammer in once a month. If I have more information about that, I'm going to try and push for him to host a hammer in at the Blackthorn Resort once a month ongoing. And that will happen no matter what snow rain shine we'll see and i think it could be a really good northeast event for the locals and if you wanted to fly in for that one night we'll see i'm going to push that that's going to be 
the Maker Camp Hammering once a month, hosted at the Blackthorn. So, Austin, if you're listening, I'm going to hold you to that. And thank you to the diehards that came up, Barefoot Forge and Luke and Priscilla and a few of the other diehards that showed up. So, guys, thank you so much. Papa Castle, Mount Phillips Metalworks, and there's a few others. I'm sorry I'm forgetting everybody, but the diehards keep it going. So, guys, thank you very much. This is the update on the horse barn. Taylor building the horse barn completely on her own design. She's completely designing it from start to finish. And this is gonna be her first house on the property. It's gonna ultimately be a post and beam barn. And then we've been making plans that once she finishes this, we are then gonna build a, another house on the property. But that's like year or two down the line. But she's gonna design and build the whole house herself. Not necessarily with a hammer and a saw, but she's gonna help design the house. He's going to actually design the house and we're going to hire the proper builders to put it together. Long term plan. The horse barn is in process doing some in floor heating in certain sections of it. It's going to be a post and beam. Taylor has picked a uh, post and beam carpenter to build it. We're going to bring in some friends when the time is right to help put it up. At this point it's kind of going into winter so we probably won't have it up or at least ready for the frame until the spring maybe early spring, maybe March, February, March. We'll see how things go. I will definitely keep everybody updated on that. To wrap up this vlog, I want to introduce you to my friend Patty Boom. Many of you might know him already. Patty was the drummer for the Scissor Sisters. The Scissor Sisters were in the early 2000s. Patty, or Patrick, is a friend of mine from art school. We were in art college together in the 80s, and uh, he was looking to get out of the city during the pandemic. And I nudged him to come to East Durham, and he's got a cabin now in East Durham, him and his girlfriend. He needed a place to set up his drums. so. For the time being, I put him in the building on the racetrack property. So Patty's got his drum set up in the house at the racetrack. So I get to listen to him play the drums all the time. It's, and it's awesome. Like Vanity Fair has a huge party and Elton has a huge party for the AIDS benefit. And we were the only band that played wow. um, at his party. It was fucking crazy. Superstar started just like, whoa. The night before, it was a Sunday. We played in Tokyo on a Sunday, and we left on a Sunday, you know, and that's like a 24-hour flight, and then we arrived on a Sunday. Like, so it's like we went back in time a day, like that <laughs> day never happened, you know? And uh, next thing you know, like, I had a huge night the night before in Tokyo, and I was like, next thing you know, we're in, in L.A., and Elton comes up, and he's like, all right, we knew where he was going to sit in with us, and he had this, like, sweet red piano like this mint red piano and he sits down and we covered bitches back and then he sat in with us to do take your mama and he was right there because the piano was right there so i'm playing i'm facing him and i was like it was just so surreal i was like wow, where am i and i look over and he's, he's looking at me he's like banging away in <laughs> the piano and i was like holy shit i'm like was i just where was i like, yesterday i was in tokyo here i am and looking around the room and it was like but just looking around the room i was like holy shit like that was that was kind of probably the peak of that kind of celebrity stuff, you know, where we, we were part of something that was like just nuts, you know? That's wild. So guys, thank you very much. Uh, I'm planning on a leather video while I'm here. We'll see if I could pull that off. Uh, time is very limited. We've been shooting 12 hours a day. This is the first week of shooting and it's been pretty hectic, but it's a lot of fun and I'm honored and privileged to be here working with such a cool group of people. So thank you to Nick and Amy and everybody else that I get a chance to hang out with. So thank you guys and thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Stories that pull listeners into someone else's world are more important than ever.
And we're proud, we're super proud to double down on the mission that started SNAP in the first place, ensuring that voices from all walks of life 